This is the history of Nissan. It's the year 1908. The company General Motors is setting up. It's also a year when a great idea is born. An unknown person comes up with a fantastic idea that will change his life forever. Looking at the auto industry in the United States of America, he sees it as something with limitless potential. This potential is unknown in his homeland, Japan. So he decides to return to Japan. He's determined to start manufacturing flexible joints using an iron forging technology he learned while in the United States. Unlike the United States, the automobile industry is still in its early stages in the land of the rising sun, Japan. However, this doesn't stop him from wanting to make cars. All he has to do is be patient and wait for the right moment. This man is Yoshisuke Ahikawa. He will become the founder of Nissan Motors and one of the greatest businessmen in Japan. It's on November 6, 1880 in Oochi Village, now known as Yamaguchi City. Yoshisuke Aikawa is born. He grows up as a real blue blood with a father who is a local lord and a grand uncle who has a key position in the government. As he studies in grad school, he works as a mechanic, earning only 45 pennies a day. He keeps this a secret from everyone and doesn't reveal his family ties or his education to anyone. His hands-on experience in manufacturing will contribute to Nissan's success. Now he makes the decision to move from Japan to the United States. When he gets to the U.S., he gets a job as a mechanic in an iron plant owned by the Gould Coupler Company. He works there for a year studying the technology used and the different methods of production. He learns that Japanese cast metal is hard but breaks easily. Aikawa thinks the Japanese industry really needs the ability to produce cheap ductile iron. So he crosses the Pacific Ocean and returns to Japan. He now has the technology to shape cast iron into complex shapes and produces iron that is much stronger than before in Japan. A brilliant idea comes to mind. He's going to produce cars. It's 1910. He's back in Japan. He sets up an iron casting firm called Tobata Himono. His products become known as Gyotan, which is two-way type of a gourd because the joint surfaces are flat like the plant. The products soon become high in demand. Tobata Imono begins producing ductile iron castings using the industry's first electric furnace. The company will eventually become the predecessor of today's Hitachi Metals. Throughout the years, Aikawa establishes many companies and acquires of People in the industry and society view him as a dynamic young businessman. He gains a good reputation. It's 1928. Yoshisuke Aikawa is asked to lead the restructuring of the Kuhara Kohigo firm. One of the steps for the company is to choose a new name. Since this company belongs to shareholders from all over Japan, Aikawa believes the name should reflect the entire Japanese society's interests and well-being. So he renames the company Nihon Sengio, which translates into the words Japan and industry. His belief makes the company stand out more compared to other firms that carry family names. The words Nihon and Sengio will later combine to become Nissan. This will be a historic moment, especially the beginning of Nissan. But the name Nissan won't be used until later in the future. Aikawa still has a long way to go. Before the merger, the firms that would become part of the brand are already producing vehicles. For example, Jitsuo Jidosa Company Limited in Osaka was making a vehicle called the Gorham. It is named after its designer and American engineer, William R. Gorham. It has three wheels, seven horsepower engine, two seats, one in front of the other, and the steering handle resembles the steering wheel of a motorboat. In Tokyo, Kwaishinsha Jidosha Koio, or Kwaishinsha Motor Company Car Work Company, is led by Masujiro Hashimoto. The company makes an open-top four-wheel passenger car. They name the car Death from the capital letters of the company's three investors. Kenjiro Dena, Rokiro Aoyama, and Meitaro Kakeuchi. In Japanese, the sound dot is similar to the word fast or agile. 
relating to the speed of a rabbit running. Later in the future, this rabbit will be revealed on the hoods of the company's car. The year is now 1928. The two firms merged to form the Dachi Dosha Seizo Company. Four years later, it's 1930. The company develops the first truly mainstream Japanese mini car called the Datsun. This little car boasts a 495cc gasoline engine with 10 horsepower in a small frame. But why 495cc? In the 1930s, the Japanese government deems cars with an engine capacity of less than 500cc to be legal for driving without a driver's license. So to occupy the new market segment, the company develops a series of machines with an engine displacement of 495cc. The name Datsun literally means son of Dot. It indicates that a smaller sized car compared to the previous model. It's the 1930s and Japan hardly has paved roads. If you found one, you're lucky. Most streets are covered with sand and pebbles. Many cities haven't yet improved their infrastructure like other modern cities in the world. Yet, in that type of road condition, surprisingly, the Datsun car can drive from Osaka to Tokyo, almost 310 miles without a problem. At that time, traveling that distance in America is nothing if you had a Ford or GM car. But a miniature Japanese car to travel that distance on Japanese roads is actually an unprecedented achievement. That tiny car is the Datsun with the letter O, which becomes the predecessor of Datsun with the letter U. Unfortunately, the Datsun car production cost technique requires a massive amount of money, which the company doesn't have. By August 1931, the Tobata Imono Company, led by Aikawa, saves the day by buying the Datsun Company. Aikawa's dream of car manufacturing finally can come true. The next year, it's March 1932. Aikawa is planning to open a Datsun sales office in Tokyo, but all sales offices are set up, get washed away by a flood. Some people start saying that the word sun in the name Datsun is similar to another Japanese word which means loss or damage. Due to negative comments, Aikawa aims to avoid losing potential customers by changing the brand name to Datsun with the letter U. This new spelling changes the phonetics to one associated with the rising sun, and it will continue to be used until the year 1984. That's how the Datsun brand name gets created. It's summer of 1981. The company decides to remove the Datsun name to strengthen the Nissan brand and boost Nissan sales in the U.S. stock market. The Nissan brand is unknown in the United States, while Toyota or Honda are popular known brands among Americans. So they hope to increase their brand awareness and popularity too. The renaming campaign lasts for three years, from 1982 to 1984. This campaign cost about $500 million. The operating expenses, including changing the badges at 1,100 dots and dealership locations, is approximately $30 million. Then they spend another $200 million from 82 to 86 on ad campaigns. The slogan for the ad is, We are driven by Datsun, and it gives away the slogan, The name is Nissan. The company then spends $50 million more on Datsun ads, which are then paid for but never used much afterward. Yet after all of this, five years later, the Datsun brand is still more familiar to consumers than Nissan. What's in the name? Well, maybe more than what you think. It's December 26, 1933. Back to the past. It's a landmark day in Aikawa's life. He realizes he has achieved the dream. He has accomplished many things in his lifetime. He had organized the founding of Jidosha Seizo in Yokohama, which consists of two of his companies. One company is Nihon Sengio, which is worth 6 million yen. The other is Tobata Imono, which is worth 4 million yen. These result in an initial worth of 10 million yen, which is a lot at the time. It's May 30th, 1934. The shareholders meet and rename the Jidosha Seizo Company to Nissan Motor Company. It's April 1935. The very first Datsun passenger car rolls off the assembly line in Yokohama. At the time, Nissan switches to using only Japanese-made components and installs presses produce body panels. This change ends the old-fashioned manual processing of metal sheets, and it puts Nissan on the fast track to success overnight. The company's president, Yoshisuke Aikawa, proves to be a brilliant leader. He makes huge plans to increase his company's production to 10 to 15,000 vehicles per year, and they nearly achieve it. It's not just about the technology they have, but also their skillful marketing. For example, the company often puts dots in the Nissan cars on stage as backdrops to music reviews, which is a popular form of entertainment in Japan. Nissan sponsors it and proves to be a great marketing strategy. It's the 1930s. 
Dodson uses famous actresses to improve their public image. And in 1936, Nissan hires four young women to introduce Dodson and Nissan cars to consumers. They're initially known as Dodson Demonstrators. It's a completely revolutionary method for its time to employ women and train them to be professional saleswomen. The Dodson Demonstrators stand on the showroom floor to show and explain the various car models. Their job is to communicate directly with the consumers and answer questions about the car and the brand. The training is extensive and the program proves success. It will eventually become the forerunner of the Miss Fair Lady Team, which starts 30 years later in 1963 and still exists today. It's 1937. Full color films are still rare, even in Hollywood. Nissan makes an incredibly groundbreaking move that propels them into the Japanese market. They start shooting their car advertisements in full color film. It's 1951. This year, Nissan is celebrating the birth of the Patrol, the first four-wheel drive SUV with a six cylinder engine. Here's the 1951 Nissan Patrol, and here's the modern Patrol. The progress is obvious. It's 1958. Nissan Motors is beginning to export passenger cars to the United States. And in September, two Datsun 1000 sedans, Model 210, take part in the Australian Mobile Gas Trial Rally. It's one of the toughest ones in the world. It's almost a race for survival. But despite the enormous difficulties and complexity of the track, or more like the complete absence of a track, the Nissan team wins a champion title in its class. They win in the class of engines with fewer than 1,000 cc's. It also is one of the longest motorsport events in the world. The race runs clockwise across the Australian continent. It starts from Sydney and ends in Melbourne, which is 10,000 miles. Participant have overcome sandy hills, swamps, and water obstacles that reach over three feet deep. But it's not just the endurance part. Two cars from the Skoda team crash in the race. Also, the Volkswagen team runs into two trees. One driver breaks his arm, and the other breaks his nose in the accident. The team from Australian Morris Major loses control, and both pilots fly out of the car. Unfortunately, one of them dies. More accidents happen. One team breaks the axle of their car. Another team collides with a kangaroo. It's such a tough endurance race. After all of these bad accidents, the race will later cease to exist after 1958. But it's at the 1958 rally the two Datsun 1000 sedans successfully cross the finish line. This victory gives the company the publicity and credibility to now enter foreign markets. The Datsun brand now becomes synonymous with smaller, high-quality cars. And in August 1958, Nissan releases the high-end Datsun Bluebird. The unique feature of the Bluebird is the first ever power-assisted front brakes created by a Japanese manufacturer. These new power-assisted brakes allow even petite Japanese women to brake easily with the light brake pressure. It's 1960 now. A new large car is in development, the Nissan Cedric. The name of the car is in honor of the main character of the famous story, Little Lord Fauntleroy, who's commonly known around the world. These two cars, the 1959 Bluebird and the 1960 Cedric, both win Japanese consumers' hearts. The Cedric is considered a larger mid-sized car in Japan. Cedric's luxurious body has twin headlights impressive dynamic performance, and a small car's low fuel consumption. The six-seater Cedric is one of Nissan's first monocoque, having a panoramic windshield and state-of-the-art equipment. It's now November 1963. The second-generation Skyline makes an appearance on a Japanese market. It's a small, comfy family car, reliable and easy to maintain. The car's engine comes with a warranty that covers two years or 18,000 miles. The year turns to 1964. The second Japanese Grand Prix GT2 category is about to begin. It features a select model, the predecessor of the GTR. The Skyline S54 2000 GT with a 2-liter engine. This Skyline competes in a race with the Porsche 904 GTS, a pure racing car built in West Germany. At the time, there's a belief that Japanese technical advancements are far behind the rest of the world. On one of the laps, the Skyline overtakes Porsche. The audience is delighted and jumps with excitement. Although the Skyline comes in second place, it can now boast a public image as a sports car. The next year, it's February 1965. The new Skyline 2000 GTB is released, largely due to the success of the previous S54 2000 GTR model. The Skyline 2000 GTB has a 2-liter 127-horsepower engine, a limited slip differential, 5-speed manual transmission, and some powerful brakes. Even the best drivers don't fail to appreciate the excellent specs of this car. 
The following year, the memorable Nissan Bluebird remains popular among families, but it's not very affordable for newlyweds. So this leads to a new model in the spring of 1966, Datsun. Nissan releases a new compact sedan with a 1-liter engine called the Datsun Sunny 1000, Model B. This new release sparks a demand for more family cars like this on the Japanese market because it's less expensive than the previous models. The name of the car when translated means full of sunshine or something similar to bright, lively, and young. It is a positive name and attracts a new market of consumers in a company that it hadn't tapped before. It's 1970s. Here's a fun fact. Nissan goes to outer space. Well, not quite like Tesla sending its roadster up, but Nissan gets involved in developing and manufacturing rockets rocket engines and launchers. The rocket Lambda 4S5 is one of the rockets they work on. Another thing they accomplish is launching the first Japanese satellite called Osimi into outer space. The purpose of Osimi is to observe the ionosphere, the sun, and millions of energetic particles from the earth. The same year, the company starts expanding its manufacturers, including making engines for the shipbuilding industry. By 1976, Nissan finally becomes the largest car exporter in the world. The next year, they sell more than 20 million cars. Later in February 1994, the first H2, a rocket-powered Nissan engine, launches successfully. Beginning in 1990, Nissan firmly established itself in the European market with its release of the Primera. In 97, Nissan begins selling this model with a Hyper CVT, which increases the fuel economy. A combination of a variable transmission and a powerful 2-liter engine with 190 horsepower is one of the first used in the industry. At the end of 2002, Nissan Motors announces the development of seat belts that are already tensioned when the car is braking hard. It's a design that helps cushion the passenger from injury in a possible collision. The new limiting system detects the movement of a potential collision based on the driver's brake pedal force and pre-tensions the seatbelt to keep the driver or the passenger safe. If an accident were to happen, the seatbelt limiter helps to maximize the effectiveness of all the other safety systems. Starting with the production of miniature cars, Nissan has grown over time into a fully global brand that has established itself in Europe in just a quarter of a century. 1969, Nissan kicks off the year with an ad campaign to promote the GTR sports car. Sadly, very few people respond enthusiastically to the campaign. So it seems like the ad is a big waste of money since they aren't making a profit. Surprisingly though, it ends up becoming legendary as one of the longest running ad campaigns in Japanese history. The campaign can be summed up in a simple phrase, the skyline of love. Three years later, it's 1972. The campaign turns into a series called Ken and Mary for the new fourth generation Skyline C110. Now this series becomes a sensation. People love it. The Skyline already has an image as a type of car meant for racing with amazing speed, something that's not for the average commuter. Nissan creates a new image for the car, a bright, fashionable style, thanks to the launch of the Ken and Mary ads. The series is about a young couple who enjoy the Hokkaido countryside. It's a huge hit and it convinces many potential buyers that the car is a dating magnet. It's rather unconventional compared to the traditional marketing methods other companies are implementing. But what matters is that people actually start to believe that driving a Skyline can help them with their dating life or pave the way for happy relationships. The car starts selling like hotcakes just goes to show the power of advertising. Regardless of the ads, the Skyline GTR C110 is a perfect car to have. The C110 is the successor to the C10, which performed well in sales. So you'd expect the C110 to also sell well. In fact, a lot of the car specs are similar, like the same hardtop body, 2-liter inline 6, rear-wheel drive, 5-speed gearbox, and 160 horsepower. Despite that, the C110 fails dismally. That's because it's 1973. The oil crisis takes a huge toll on the economy. Large, powerful cars fade away into the darkness. More people prefer smaller cars with lower gas consumption. Nissan ends up producing only 197 copies of the Skyline GTR. If you can get your hands on one now, you got a real collector's item. After six months, they end production and the rest is history for that model. 
Nissan retires from motorsports and the production of the famous GTR goes on to hiatus for 16 years. Despite Nissan's ad campaign, in the end the car loses popularity. It's the mid 1980s. Nissan's research and development department launches the 901 activity program. The goal is to achieve the title of the world's best vehicle performance by 1990. They then release the Nissan Primera P10 and the Nissan Skyline R32. With these two cars, Nissan strengthens its reputation as a leader in technology. It's now 1988. Nissan shows the world its monster with the GTR name. The earlier GTR was sharp for the racetrack but was also made for the average working person. A key role in the creation is the FIA regulations for Group A racing cars, in which Nissan is actively involved. The previous model, the R31, was powered by RB series engine, which equips the original NICS Nissan induction control system intake system. They introduced their proprietary HICAS high capacity active steering system for the first time. This is a different way of rotating the steering wheel using hydraulics, rotating both the front and the rear wheels. As a result, the vehicle's maneuverability and cornering improves. The power of the RB20 DET engine reaches 190 horsepower and 240 newton meters of torque. The R32 has all the stuffings Nissan initially plans to increase the volume of the RB20 DET to a 2.4 liter and then adds another turbocharger, but according to the regulations. Having a turbo would put the car in a class that doesn't allow a wheel size of more than 10 inches. Nissan fits the GTR with an Atessa ETS electrically controlled all-wheel drive which weighs about 220 pounds. They lose the advantage over the 4-liter rear-wheel drive. They decided to go all-in and increase the engine to a 2.6 liter. Now to put the car into an even higher class than before, the 4.5 liter class. But at least they are in the correct weight class. One of the main goals of the development of the R32 generation is to compete with Porsche. Porsche at the time, the Nuremberg Nordschleife record for production vehicles was held by the Porsche 944 at 8 minutes 45 seconds. But Nissan test driver Hiroyoshi Kato flies through the Nordschleife in 8 minutes 20 seconds in the new R32 GTR. This track is almost 13 miles long consisting of 33 left turns and 40 right turns. The elevation changed from the lowest to highest points of 980 feet differential. Still, the Nissan Skyline R32 GTR strikes down the previous title holder, the Ford Sierra Cosworth. After that, Australian journalists nicknamed the R32 GTR Godzilla because of its fast acceleration and excellent handling, the car becomes legendary. In the local Japanese touring championships, this beast wins all 29 out of 29 races. The GTR holds the title for five years in a row, and it also wins all races in the N1 Super Taiko Series. What do people love about the GTR? It's unrivaled power and speed. The 2021 Nissan GTR Nismo is the fastest car of the brand, and they put it in mass production. The car has the 600 horsepower engine propels the car to 60 miles an hour in just two and a half seconds with a top speed of 205 miles an hour. The GTR's fast steering, rigid construction, and adjustable suspension make even the enthusiasts feel like a pro behind the wheel. In the new version, the supercar gets a six-cylinder twin-turbo engine. Also, the new turbochargers increase the power significantly. Each engine block has an IHI turbocharger with integrated exhaust manifold and electronic waste rate activator to decrease weight and bolster car balance. The electronic stability control constantly monitors the car's behavior. If off-balance behavior is detected, such as sliding and skidding, torque to the wheel gets altered to help stabilize the car. The Nissan GTR can reach speeds of up to 205 miles an hour thanks to the all-wheel drive system. The Atessa ETS all-wheel drive transmission has excellent responsiveness. It takes just 0.1 seconds to go up a gear. The fuel tank of this modern Godzilla is 19 and a half gallons. The mileage in the city is 16 and in the highway it's 22. In the mixed mode it's 19.6. The improved aerodynamic features of the GTR increases the downforce which keeps the drag coefficient at a very low 0.26. Nissan isn't only into gasoline engines. 
Nissan also has expertise in electric vehicles such as the Nissan LEAF Nismo RC racing competition model. The all-wheel drive LEAF Nissan RC has placed the power and torque of its predecessor which was induced in 2011. In 2011, Nissan changes the concept of racing when they launched the world's first zero emission race ready car without an exhaust pipe. The Nissan LEAF Nismo RC in 2018, the second generation of the series arrives with the promise of electric high performance. The Nissan LEAF Nismo RC does not have a traditional engine, does not use gasoline, and it drives almost silently. The three-piece body is made from carbon fiber, which makes it as light as possible. The low, wide silhouette and chunky tail are designed to create significant downforce while maintaining vehicle stability and traction. The new all-wheel drive system gives the Nissan LEAF Nismo RC outstanding cornering progress. Power is controlled independently of each axle instantly transferring torque to the tire with maximum grip. The power in the axles allows the car to quickly and efficiently maneuver around the track. Like the production Nissan LEAF, the Nissan LEAF Nismo RC is powered by electrically stored revolutionary lithium ion batteries. The long sloping headlights are also the true Nissan LEAF design, but that's where the family resemblance ends. The Nissan RC does not have a trunk, rear doors or seats, carpets, navigation screen or other common amenities. It is wide and low to the ground and its aerodynamics form less than 48 inches from the roof of the road. And it's almost 12 inches shorter than the original Nissan LEAF. A 100% electric transmission does not require oxygen to maintain peak performance even at high altitudes, where thin air tends to reduce combustion engine's efficiency. Immediate acceleration is a hallmark of not just the LEAF Nismo RC, but every Nissan electric vehicle. In 1999, Nissan allied with the French carmaker Renault. In 2016, Mitsubishi Motors joined the alliance. Today, the total number of alliance sales is over 11 million vehicles, selling more than 60 gas and electric car models worldwide under the brands Nissan, Infiniti, and Datsun. If you like this episode, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button.